you on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest build of Havoc OS on this Redmi Note 7 Pro and this as you can see is the 15th July 2020 build of this ROM and you can see there are two variants one of which is like with gapps and one of which is without gapps I have installed the with gapps version of course and if you want to flash this ROM here is a card for you now let me show you the Android version over here on top we have the Havoc OS logo up there and then we have the Android version S10. The Havoc OS version is 3.7 as you can see. The security patch is latest of July 5th, 2020. The build date again is 15th July 2020. And here as you can see the stock kernel is Azure Perf Plus kernel. In the system panel, let me show you, there is no system updater over here, which is kind of a bummer, but I update manually anyway, so I don't have a problem with it. And the Gboard is default keyboard on this ROM, so you won't need to worry about your privacy or something. Let me disable the dark theme over here. Now, let's just quickly talk about the stock launcher. Well, let me show you the settings. Here, if I go into the about, as you can see, this is the shady launcher present by default over here on this ROM. Let me go back. There are some amount of customizations here, actually. In the gesture section, we have the double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen. So that is really cool. We have the swipe down for notification and swipe down to clear all something. So I don't really use that. And in the icons over here, we have the icon pack changing option. You can download and enable icons over here. And then notification dots option is there. And you can also customize the grid settings from here. As you can see, there is this dock icons and then column and row numbers. You can change it from here. In the app drawer, we have this app prediction disabling option. So I like that we have the app suggestions disabling option. I really, really love this feature. And we have the icon labels and stuff. You can disable it on portrait or landscape over here. So that's cool. Multi-line labels is there. If you want to see the full names of the apps, you can see that, I guess. Let me go back to the home screen here. We have the at a glance, Google feed, top gradient and stuff like that. Now let me show you the stock launcher actually. And to the left, we have this Google's Discover page. Swiping up gets you to the app drawer. Swiping down gets you to this quick settings panel over here. And widgets and stuff are working totally fine. So that is not a problem. And here, as you can see, double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen does work super fine. And even double tap to wake actually works fine over here. That is not a problem. Let me show you the few minute scanner speed here. And as you can see, the unlocking speed is decent. Let me show you again. Unlocks. Let's double tap to lock. Now let's just unlock. And as you can see, fairly fast fingerprint scanner. No issues with the fingerprint scanner over here. As you can see, it unlocks right away whenever I tap my index finger over here. And as you can see, it unlocks. So the fingerprint scanner speed, I have no complaints. It is really, really fast and very reliable fingerprint scanner. And inside security, we will also see the face unlock over here. So let me show you by setting it up. Now let's just double tap on the home screen to lock. Now double tap to wake. And as you can see, it unlocks. Let's try it again. Unlocks again. Let's try one more time. And as you can see, this is how fast the face unlock is. So no issues with unlocking this device with fingerprint scanner or face unlock. Both works amazingly well. The only bummer which I would say is the stock camera on this ROM. Well, this just sucks that we have this old kind of Google camera over here, as you can see. I did not even open it, so you can guess how the camera is over here. As you can see, it takes so much time to switch the cameras even, as you can see. I don't like this camera over here at all, and you can use it if you want to. As you can see, you can go to the settings and stuff from here, and you can use it, of course, if you want to. But I have already installed the ANX camera. This is working totally fine, as you can see, with the front camera and stuff. Just notice the camera switching. I think it is even a lot faster with the camera switching too. And portrait mode and stuff, everything is working because I flashed the 48 megapixel fix. If you want to flash this ANX camera and if you want to see how to do it, here is a card for you. And I have also installed this Google Camera 7 and this is working fine too. I'll put the link for this in the description box below. And night sight and stuff, everything should be working fine with this Google Camera too. This is the Unix version by the way. Now, let me talk about some more things like this LED RGB remote app. I have tested this for the IR Blaster present on the device. And the IR Blaster over here works super fine, no issues with this LED RGB remote app. And the DRM info shows as level one here, so that is not a problem. You can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p here. And talking about 1080p, yes, you can watch 1080p videos right now on YouTube India app, as you can see. So that is really cool. They did give the 1080p back, but you have to use Wi-Fi right now to see 1080p videos on YouTube. 
And if you want to know about banking apps, yes, the safety net test passes right away. So the banking apps like Google Pay and stuff will be working right out of the box. So you won't be having any problems with banking apps, I think, in this ROM. I did set up my Google Pay and it is working fine. In this configuration center, you will find all the customizations, but I'll show you those later on. But let me first show you some more things like this violet parts. Well, from here, you can change the SL Linux mode. And as you can see, SL Linux is by default enforcing. And you can set this persist across reboot so it will change or something i guess and we have the enable usb fast charging that means if you connect to a usb 3.0 port it will charge the device at 900 mh as you can see and over here we have the me sound enhancer or the me audio direct and from here you can choose it to youth edition or something if you want to get really good quality audio from here and i would say in terms of the audio quality i'm really impressed the sound output via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is amazing over here i have no issues with the sound output on this rom at least and you can also choose the presets from here now let me just show you the battery settings this is how it looks like now one thing i want to mention over here Regarding the battery life, I would say, yes, it is good enough. You can get about six to seven hours of screen on time fairly easily. No issues with six to seven hours of screen on time. Now talking about fast charging. Yes, it does support fast charging. As you can see, it was pulling almost 3000 milliamp hours with the 18 watt fast charger. So that is not a problem. But the problem is the device gets heated up in 10 to 15 minutes if you are constantly using the device. So the fast charging also drops after some amount of time or somehow lock the device and don't use it for some time because the phone, if you use it while fast charging, the phone does get heated up and then the fast charging rate actually drops up to 1500 or something. So yeah, that I have noticed and that is kind of weird or you can call it a bummer. So that's how it is. But the battery life is decent over here. Six to seven hours of screen on time is not bad. You can get more than that, like seven to eight hours too, if you don't use it heavily. And you can see the full battery usage from here, of course. Let me go back. We have the display settings here and adaptive or auto brightness is there. Night light is there. Then styles and wallpaper section is there. Let me show you. As you can see, you can go to custom and choose some like fonts from here. Here are plethora of fonts as you are noticing over here. Let me click next, next and here as you can see all the accent colors are there. You can set a custom accent color for a custom theme from here so that's not a problem. Inside clocks we have multiple clock options over here just for the lock screen so you can customize it pretty much. And in the wallpaper section let me show you over here as you can see we have this stock wallpaper by default. Let me scroll down and we have some live wallpapers too by default. You don't have to download any of them. It is already pretty downloaded. Now let me scroll down. We have the rotation settings and you can also have 180 degree rotation over here. So that's cool. And we have the font display size changing option. Then you can control the DPI and lock screen display over here is there and always on display is there. But I don't know why you would use that. Let me go back. We have the double tap to wake over here too. And that works fine too. In the sound settings, let me show you. Over here we have the screenshot sound, touch vibration, touch sounds, etc. Disabling option. Volume steps is there. Of course the Mi Audio Direct in that violet parts is there but not in the sound settings. Here we have the vibrate and haptics. You can have this in call vibration if you want to. Vibrate for calls, vibrate for notifications is there if you want to disable any of them. And ringtone vibration pattern is there. You can change the pattern of the ringtone vibration. Let me go back here is how the stock dialer looks like and as you can see there is the wi-fi calling so it does support wi-fi calling and faulty calling both and it shows the wi-fi call and logo up here as you can see there is a video calling option and stuff but no call recording option at least by default on the stock dialer and here is how the volume panel looks like you can expand it just like this as you can see and let's go now into the configuration center here we have the status bar and clock, logo, etc. controlling option. You can definitely customize the status bar clock from here. Pretty much the date and the font size and stuff. And brightness control is there so that you can control the brightness just like this. As you can see, you can just swipe on the status bar to adjust the brightness. This is a very cool feature. I use it on a daily basis as you guys know. Double tap to sleep on the status bar is working fine. This network speed meter option is there but I'm not using it. I use a separate app for this and carrier label and stuff you can enable that battery icon is there as you can see you can change between these many battery icons this is for the status bars battery icon and battery percentage you can set to next to the icon or inside the icon battery bar is there and inside status bar icons we have the like headset bluetooth etc icons over here let me go back we have the 4g icon then data disabled bluetooth battery stats and stuff is there 
Let me go back to the quick settings here. We have the quick pull down option. You can choose it to right or left. Smart pull down option is there too. So you can use that. Battery estimates is there for the quick settings panel. Background opacity you can change for the quick settings panel too. And column and row number customization is here. Haptic feedback and stuff is here. And then you can change the slider position of the brightness like slider. And you can have this disabled if you want to. And then edit icon and stuff you can disable that. In the lock screen we have the double tap to sleep of course on the lock screen and then music visualizer is there pocket detection is there if you want to enable that and authentication vibration and stuff is there for the fingerprint but there is no always unlock with the fingerprint scanner that i miss over here and we have the status bar and quick settings etc option and charging info does show up on the lock screen so that is pretty cool while charging it looks good and in the ambient display we have the battery level and always on display and stuff is there and the pickup gesture and stuff is there for the ambient display. Let me go back to the buttons here. We have the navigation bar and stuff. And here we have the system navigation. So from here you can change this pill bar size over here. As you can see this length you can change it to long so that it becomes bigger like this. And you can customize it pretty much. And two and three button navigation is there too. In the power menu we have the advanced reboot over here. And advanced reboot on the lock screen even appears. Right now let me show you if I go into the power menu and click on advanced reboot. Here we have the rebooting directly to recovery or fast boot option. We have the screen of power button toggle torch. You can choose it to long press for torch. Then we have the swap keys for the two or three navigation buttons. And we have the arrow animation and long swipe is there. If you want to set a long swipe action to right or left, you can do that. And haptic feedback is there too. If you want to have haptic feedback while going back and stuff, you can use that. And let me go into the gestures here. We have the system navigation gestures again, which I'm not going to show you. And swipe to take screenshot is there. And as you can see, this is the oxygen waste kind of screenshot. So scrolling, share or edit or delete option is there. Let me go back. We have the notifications. Here we have the charging LED and stuff. Then edge lighting option is there. You can customize the edge lighting from here definitely. And as you can see, you can change the light color to custom or accent color. And from here you can change the edge lighting color. So yeah, pretty cool options. Let me scroll down. We have the heads up option and you can customize the heads up too if you want that. And force close notification and stuff is there in the notifications. Let's scroll down. We have the screen settings and from here you can have some screen padding or the status bar padding if you want to have those. And the cutout mode is there so that's pretty cool. Let me go back. We have the animations and here we have the whole UI animation so you can change whatever you want. Even the quick setting toggle animation you can do that. Let me go back. We have the misc settings here. We have the gaming mode if you want to see this and the screenshot type you can change it to full or partial and we have the wake up device disabling option while you are plugging in the device it won't wake up the device if you have it disabled charging animation is there this is the pixel kind of animation it does while you plug in the like phone with the charger and it has the adaptive playback and ringtone focus mode is there and in the about section of course there is the developers names and stuff you can donate to the developers of course from here do donate them to support from here of course and of course you can swipe just like this whenever like even if you're in an app you can just swipe like this so that it brings the google assistant over here just like this looks pretty dope over here as you can see and here is how the quick settings panel looks like and of course you can add screen record fps info etc and there are a lot more toggles over here as you can see you can add the always on display and stuff cpu info etc and screen stabilization screenshot etc you can add from here and you have a lot more options over here too so you have bunch of toggles from here let me go back let me show you this is the screen recorder you can change the bit rate from here you can change the audio source to internal or the microphone audio then we have the show touch screen option over here this is not the oxygen OS kind of screen recorder by the way and let me enable the fps info and as you can see on the top left it shows the fps info right now so yeah the fps info actually works over here now let me open some of the apps and show you guys the app of speeds and the ram management over here Let's open Facebook. Now let's open Twitter. Play Store. Instagram. Google Home. YouTube. Sometimes the wallpaper is going kind of weird as I'm using the stock wallpaper by the way. Now let's open all the apps from memory again. Okay, so Play Store, 
was closed from memory youtube is still in memory instagram is in memory home is in memory now let's open this led rgb remote app it is in memory amazon still in memory it looks like flipkart is still in memory let me okay the me.com app is still in memory this me home app still in memory so yep the memory management is good but chrome was like removed from the memory so the memory management won't be as good as some other roms like pixel experience or evolution x i guess but yes the like memory management is good enough to daily drive with this is a 4gb ram unit by the way of the redmi note 7 pro and i think this is fairly good as you can see play store was removed from memory again and here is the geekbench score of this rom so i think the havoc os right now is a fairly good option for the redmi note 7 pro let me in the comments what do you guys think i like this rom pretty much as this has the double tap to sleep anywhere and stuff i like these features so yeah this is pretty much it guys thank you so much for watching this video give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet this is tito from kerry and tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now